please make sure you've got your copy of the timeline with you and uh, we can start going through some of the codes that are used to uh, and explain what these are actually meaning in the context of the line. Remember I mentioned this in relation to Vitruvian Man by Da Vinci that you'll see the circle and the square. If you go right to the center of the circle, if you get a photocopy of it and then cross it until it hits the very center, what you'll see is the very center of Vitruvian Man is the navel, its connection, which was the connection to the mother. Is this making sense? We have BC, before Christ, the right hemisphere was used more in around the world. So that's Eastern Southern philosophy was in domination at that time. That dominated. They had matrifocal culture, meaning there was a focus on the female, the feminine, the mother principles. But then in the time AD, Anno Domini, there's been the Western Northern philosophy has been dominating in the world. And that focuses more on patriarchal culture. We've got BC and we've got AD. So the red and the blue. The timeline houses photographs, symbols, diagrams and written information and places them in chronological order along the line. The timeline is a continuum of civilizations and empires by duration as colored bars with a start date and a finish date. The pre-dynastic period is used to depict the development of Nile Valley symbolic and cosmological concepts, including the formation of the Kemetic Sothic calendar, given the date of 4241 BC. So when you're looking at the, the Kemetic periods, remember I said that cultural political Kemet started before the dynasties. So don't get hoodwinked into thinking that ancient Egypt started with the dynasties. That's just the point when certain families started to rule. Kemet was in existence way before that. And please remember that this is the short chronology. Please check out Robin Walker's book, When We Ruled. The culture of Kemet is maintained through the ensuing invasions by the Greeks and Romans, who are known as the Ptolemaic pharaohs who imitate and adopt the practices of mummification, religious icons and architecture, etc. So it says here, these European imitations are passed off as being ancient Egyptian in some museum exhibits and are used to claim Egypt as a white civilization. Now, Kemet was ruled by a series of royal families between the dates of 3200 and 343 BC, that's on the short chronology. It's a time continuum of just under 3,000 years. That, and that's just the dynastic period. Timeline panels 11 through 6. In comparison, the kings and queens of Great Britain have ruled for 943 years from AD 1066, the Norman invasion, to date. The third golden age is the imperial and temple age. And that went from 1560 BC to 11, 1187 BC. That's panel 8, and that's dynasties 18 through 19. Interestingly enough, I think you'll find that this is the date where they say Moses existed. Now, Bishop Usher, who in AD 1650... Now, I know that some of you said Bishop Usher. This is not Usher, the dancer and singer from the USA... In, the, in these times now, he with the diamond training shoes. This is Bishop Usher. And he said in his book, The Annals of the Old Testament, in, written in AD 1650, that the world was created or it was finally created in the, in the evening of October the 24th in 4004 BC. Civilization of Kerma is shown. It's 2400 BC through to 1500 BC. See that on timeline panels 10 to 8. The civilization of Napata, 1000 BC to 300 BC. That runs from timeline panels 7 to 6. You'll see Carthage from 840 BC to 146 BC. That's timeline panels 7 to 5 as well. So remember Carthage, was finally ended 
with the Roman invasion there and razed to the ground, literally. Ancient Rome goes from 753. Now, what that's actually saying here, Mali and Songhai were operating side by side, basically in the same geographical region. But then, of course, later Songhai is the one that, that wins out. So this is, these are called Western Sudanic civilizations. We have the symbolizations of Zimbabwe and Monomatapa. Now, please, I want to be clear on this. I am not saying that Islam has propagated the slavery of Africans. What I'm saying is that Islam was used as a political tool by those who were doing the enslavement and colonization of Africa. The same way that later we end up with the Atlantic Age from AD 1492 to date, that European slavery and colonialism took place. The Europeans used the religion of Christianity to substantiate the colonization process. And so I always say those dark ages were very dark because black folk were right across Europe. But remember, the Moors were Africans and Arabs who were unified under al-Islam, coming from places like Morocco and Mauritania. And then they invaded through the Straits of Gibraltar, which is why the Rock of Gibraltar is named for Gibral al-Tariq, is known as the Gibran al-Tariq, meaning the mountain of Tariq. These are white women being killed by white men and women. Think on that one, because that's quite deep. Because 1480, around the time of the Spanish Inquisition, if you think about what happens in 1492 in the Atlantic Age, is where basically anything that is female is cast as evil. Anything that is black is cast as evil. So if you are a black woman, you're doubly getting it. And if you're the offspring of a black woman, you're doubly getting it.